Gun control is racist. The anti-Second Amendment crowd desperately wants people like you to believe that the Second Amendment is founded on racism. They argue that the Second Amendment existed to arm slaveholders to put down slave insurrections. This could not be further from the truth. Logically, legally, or historically. Logically, because you cannot oppress someone who is armed. Legally, because that is the opposite of what the Second Amendment stands for. And historically, because it has always been gun control, not the Second Amendment, that has been used as the tool of oppression. In this video, which is part of a larger series that explores the racist history of gun control, we will take a brief look at the racist gun control laws of the colonies going back to the early 1600s, then leading all the way through the early nation up until the Civil War in 1860. We have a ton to cover, so let's get into it. The Second Amendment is racist, right? Well, that's what some people are pushing as the cornerstone of their political agenda in an effort to claim the moral high ground. But just wait until you see our historical and legal analysis coming up. But first, quickly, let's look at this logically. Logically, we can quickly show this to be false. And just think about it. Are you more or less vulnerable to oppression and tyranny if you are armed? Are you more or less capable of resisting and defending yourself if you are armed? Of course you are better off if you are armed. So logically, laws that strip you of your right and ability to possess firearms make you more defenseless. If this is true, then it follows that the Second Amendment, which is principally, historically, and legally about guaranteeing you the ability to defend yourself is about life and liberty, not about oppression. Laws that restrict the Second Amendment, we're talking about gun control, that may be about tyranny and oppression. And we're going to see a lot of that going on here in this entire series about the racist history of gun control. The Second Amendment, in practice, is about stopping the government from disarming people. The Second Amendment, in practice, is about empowering people to live, period. Everything else is gun control. So the question is not, does the Second Amendment exist to put down slave revolts? The question is, how did racist politicians, cops, and courts do their best to disarm African Americans, as well as Catholics, and Native Americans, and then later on in the 1900s, Italians and other Southern and Eastern Europeans from possessing guns? The answer is through gun control and attacking the Second Amendment. If you were to somehow expand the Second Amendment, it would have been to allow slaves and other racial and religious minority groups to gain the right and access to firearms. Expanding the right leads to arming slaves? This doesn't sound like something aimed at oppression. Just the opposite, gun control, is the legal boot of history. The racist roots of gun control predate this great country's founding, and by extension, also the Second Amendment, which did not come to be until 1791. Let's start in Virginia at 1640, when the Virginia colony passed a law that enforced, quote, prohibiting Negroes, slave and free, from carrying weapons, including clubs, that all such mulattoes, Negroes, and Indians shall appear without arms, end quote. Other colonies, such as Massachusetts and Pennsylvania, also passed very similar laws aimed at specifically disarming and preventing Native Americans from acquiring firearms. In 1712, the colony of Virginia enacted another law banning African slaves from possessing firearms. The same year saw South Carolina as a colony do the same thing by adopting, quote, an act for the better ordering and governing of Negroes and slaves, end quote, that led to their legal disarmament. In 1756, the colony of Virginia once again passed an act that singled out Catholics by ordering their disarmament of all Catholics or reputed papists under many conditions. Now, Keep in mind that the United States was not founded until July 4th, 1776, and the Second Amendment was not passed until 1791, along with other amendments guaranteeing the freedom of speech, religion, and protections against unreasonable searches and seizures, among other fundamental freedoms that too many of us seem to take for granted today. But that did not stop the racist gun control, because until after the Civil War, the Constitution and the amendments were only thought to check against the federal government's power, not state governments. So again, it only applied against the federal government, not states. So the gun control assault against minorities continued largely at the state and local levels. In 1806, so again, after the founding of America, in 1806 and again in 1811, the state of Louisiana issued a complete gun and self-defense ban for slaves, and slaves were denied the use of firearms. 
They further made it illegal to sell firearms to slaves. In 1819, South Carolina, now as a state, passed a blanket ban on possession of firearms by slaves unless they had a written permission slip from their masters. Arguably, this might be the nation's first concealed carry permit law. In 1825, Florida passed an act to govern patrols whereby white citizen patrols, quote, shall enter into all Negro houses and suspected places and search for arms and other offensive or improper weapons and may lawfully seize and take away all such arms, weapons, and ammunition, end quote. Section 9 of the same law did allow for slaves to be armed with a weekly renewable license, once again, early example concealed carry permits, but only while, quote, in the presence of some white person, end quote. And then in August of 1831, something important happened. There was the Nat Turner Slave Rebellion in Southampton County, Virginia. The four-day revolt was led by Nat Turner, a 30-year-old literate and naturally intelligent, gifted young man who was also an enslaved African-American preacher. Both the revolt and the reprisals after it was put down were brutal by any human measure. But the repercussions also extended legislatively far beyond Virginia alone. However, in Virginia, there were new laws that were immediately passed aimed at stripping free blacks of trials by jury and to make any free black who was convicted of a crime subject to sale into slavery and relocation. In December of 1831, Virginia passed a law entirely banning free blacks from carrying any kind of weapon. Elsewhere, in response to the slave rebellion, racist legislatures took notice and decided to implement gun control to suppress future possible occurrences. In 1831, Florida passed a law repealing the ability for free blacks to possess weapons with a court's approval and made it entirely illegal for blacks to possess any weapons whatsoever. And by the way, this wasn't just limited to the South. In 1831, Delaware said that free blacks had to petition and get court approval if they wanted to carry a weapon and get a license. Again, early example of a carry permit. In Maryland, again in 1831, the state completely prohibited free blacks from carrying any weapons. In 1833, a few years later, Florida expanded their laws that authorized white citizen patrols to search slave homes as well as to search free black homes for weapons, including the authority to summarily punish the owners of any weapons if there was not a proper explanation, whatever that could have been. Same year in 1833, Georgian racists now passed a law declaring, quote, it shall not be lawful for any free person of color in this state to own use, or carry firearms of any description whatever, end quote. 1840, we saw both Texas and Florida pass complete gun bans for slaves possessing any kind of weapon or firearm. North Carolina joined in 1845 and later Mississippi in 1852 with similar blanket bans. I could keep going on and on. There were about 20 laws in total that I could find pre-Civil War in both the North and South that are clear-cut examples of race and minority-based attacks on the principles of the Second Amendment by using gun control to disarm slaves and other minority groups. Legally, by the way, if you're asking, how is this tolerated? Well, basically three reasons. Number one, slaves and blacks were not legally recognized as people. By the way, we will be getting to the U.S. Supreme Court Dred Scott decision of 1857 that addressed that in just a moment. Now, since blacks, whether free or not, were not people, then under the law, they did not have any rights. Number two, the 14th Amendment, which extended the U.S. Constitution's restraint on federal government power to equally restrain state power, as well as to protect the rights of citizens across both spheres, so from both the state and the federal government, had not been passed yet. That won't happen until following the Civil War, and we'll get to that in another video. Accordingly, while the federal government could not violate your rights guaranteed under the Constitution, the states and the local governments sure could, subject to state and local law. And perhaps the biggest reason why these laws, by the way, were tolerated was because, number three, the obvious, what could slaves, blacks, Catholics, and Native Americans do about it? They were minorities in a society that often treated them like second-class citizens at best, by the way, for the latter of those two groups, or literal non-human property in the first group. They had little to no recourse to the courts, and they were deliberately unarmed. The combined effects were that they were helpless to resist the racist government's tyranny, either politically by voting, 
economically with no purchasing power, or physically without any access to weapons. Racist gun control had stripped them of their last and final option on purpose. Then in 1857, the infamous Supreme Court Dred Scott v. Sanford decision saw the court rule that freed slaves cannot become citizens. Why? This is important, so pay attention. Among the chief reasons noted was because the Second Amendment, as declared by the Chief Justice in the court's opinion, quote, it would give to persons of the Negro race full liberty of speech, to hold public meetings upon political affairs, and to keep and carry arms wherever they want, end quote. In other words, the racist court did not want for slaves or freed blacks to become citizens because they wanted to deny them their Second Amendment, not grant it to them as seemingly anti-gun people would want you to believe. What else is, by the way, interesting about this quote? That the Chief Justice, in the same breath, also documented the prevalent view at the time that the Second Amendment provides the rights to each individual to keep and carry arms wherever they went, utterly disconnected or divorced from any militia service. By the way, if you want to see a video about the history of laws surrounding the phrase, a well-regulated militia, let me know in the comment section. My final thoughts and wrap up is coming in a moment, but please believe me when I say that there is so much more that we could have gone into here talking about the pre-Civil War colonies and states. If you want a more in-depth video about something that you saw here or something that I had to leave out, let me know in the comment field. This video is only one video in an entire series about the racist history of gun control. If you want to see more videos like this, then please let me know by clicking like, subscribing to the channel, and telling me in the comment field. I take a lot of my feedback about what video topics I should cover based on how my videos perform as well as your comments. Please do not forget to subscribe to catch the rest of our series as it comes out. You won't believe what we have in store. The bottom line takeaways though. If the Second Amendment, which guarantees individuals the right to own and carry weapons to protect themselves, was somehow intrinsically racist, then we would see the expansion of Second Amendment rights leading to more slavery. Instead, we see the exact opposite. Gun control leading to tyranny, literal slavery, and vast oppression. The anti-Second Amendment crowd weakly claims that the Second Amendment was about arming racist whites to terrorize and oppress blacks and to put down slave rebellions. The simple fact that Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, and even Gandhi, among many others, all knew is that it's a hell of a lot harder to oppress and murder people when they can fight back with weapons. The Second Amendment had no application to Southern slaveholding states prior to the 14th Amendment, and we saw no new laws passed at the state level to disarm slaveholders. Instead, we saw a relentless stream of gun control aimed at perpetuating the cycle of humanity's oldest and darkest institution, slavery. It is also worth noting and paying attention to the fact that some of our country's first permit and license to carry laws dealt with limiting and controlling the ability of slaves and freed blacks from carrying and possessing weapons, meaning that you can also argue that concealed carry permit laws are racist in history. But don't worry, I have an entire series of videos coming up and one's really going to be dealing heavily with exactly that. So again, subscribe if you've not already done so. Finally, it is also important to note that the Second Amendment was not passed until 1791, while many of these laws predate it by more than 150 years. What's my point? The Second Amendment has nothing to do with disarming people. The people are only vulnerable when they are disarmed. And for that, you need gun control. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, you might like some of the other content that we've been up to recently. Please feel free to check out these other videos. We'll see you in the next one.